Good evening. Today's Bible study comes from Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62, and reads as follows. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit to serve it for service in the kingdom of God. This is Jesus walking um, as he's headed to Jerusalem and it's really talking about the cost of following Jesus. It is about, and there's three situations here where they were talking about what they would do and how they would do it. And as they went in the way going up to Jerusalem where it was expected Christ would first appear in his glory, one said to him, Lord, I will follow thee wheresoever thou goest. This, um, this resolution, this thought, this mind, this concept has to be true about all of Christ's disciples. We have to follow him wherever he goes. We are supposed to follow him wherever he goes. And, and this is a serious thing, and maybe the man that stated it to him didn't know exactly what he was saying. But he made a very large promise to Christ. And... If he's going to go wherever Christ goes, then <clears throat> he has to do whatsoever Christ does in order for him to follow Christ. Because you can't follow him unless you know his ways and do his ways. And if you look at uh, Revelation 14 and 4, it says, These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they remained virgins. They follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They were purchased from among mankind and offered as first fruits of God and the Lamb. So, you got to remember what you're saying because that's a big commitment. And when I say commitment, just to say and not think of the commitment you're giving Him. We all should follow Christ and we all should follow Him wherever He goes. But what the man was saying was very very strong in statement, but the man did not know exactly where Christ had to go. And even if it was fire, death, beating, whatever it was, the man said that he would follow him. And then he, he goes on and says, I'm not, don't promise yourself these great things, you know, because you are not, you are not me. Um, he said to count upon being humble in this world and expect, expect bad things in this world, but Don't put a promise in for something that is not in your position to do. Jesus was obedient, faithful, and gave power. We receive power, so we can't make that statement. We should follow Christ in all we do and all we say. But there was only one that completed the law and that died on the cross. Then it goes on to say, for the Son of Man has not where to lay his head. And this is just telling you how bad the condition was for Christ at this time. And he, he says it, but he says it as to say, other creatures, the foxes have dens, they have a place. The birds have nests, they have a place. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. 
Now, Jesus is putting some things out there to speak to us, because we're the ones that persecuted him. Excuse me for yelling, and we're the ones that did this to him, and he had nothing. He was telling you, I have nowhere to go. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Well, this stopped the movement for him because there is nothing more important than following Christ. Not your father, mother. If you look at how he called his disciples, he had two that came that were by themselves and fishermen. And then he had the other two that came that were with their father. And they left their father and their job and followed him. Nothing comes before him. So they should have just said, I'm following him. So the, the one that created all did not have his own dwelling place in this world at this time. And he let it be known. He was the creator of all things, yet... There was no place for him to rest. Even animals had a place, but not him. So when you move down to verse 59, and he's telling the man to follow him, and the man replied, you, you got to remember to keep Jesus first. And Jesus responded to him. He said, Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But go and proclaim the kingdom of God. That is our main job. We have no other true job except to proclaim the kingdom of God. So the other thing here is the service that they were going to render for the dead, they needed to go render for God. The dead are, they dead. There's nothing to them. I mean, we hold funerals and all that, but we know that that body is at rest. It is with the, the earth until the Lord calls it. But the word of God has to keep moving. It has to keep going. And we can't let it stop. And although Christ wasn't giving him the notes to say, no, don't do that to pay it, you know, to do a service for the people. He wasn't saying that because we're supposed to be good in all our relations that we have in the world, you know. Um, and to show piety at home and to request our parents but don't use that as an excuse for my duty to God. And that's what this actually was. This was an excuse to a duty of God. The man should have said, I got to go do my duty to God first, and then I'll go handle my business with the dead. But he put the dead, the service of the dead above, excuse me, the Lord. So still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Once again, something was placed in front of God. And he says, Jesus, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. And this, this was a strong verse because, one, he uses something that they know, which is this plow. No man having put his hand to the plow and designing to make good work of his plowing will look back or, or even look behind him. Remember Lot and his wife? For then he makes balks with his plow. You know, he, he messes it up. And then that ground that has been worked on is no longer any good. So if you follow him, then yeah, 
if you want to reap the advantages to what he says and do so. And that means, how can I put it? If you're going to follow Jesus, then follow him. Don't look back at this worldly life. And Lot's wife was a perfect example of they had been told you can get away, you are free. And what did she do? She looked back at what she was leaving in that world and became a pillar of salt. And that's what he's saying. Don't look back. There is no need to look back. You are with me. Leave this world alone. No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. And he relates this to what they're used to. Agriculture. Growing things. And put into the plow but if they look back they mess up and if they've been doing a good job why would they have to look back they already know the job is done and complete amen